has been a supporter of UN Habitat to inaugurate this second session of the UN Habitat Assembly. Mr. President, we are truly grateful for your magnificent attention and you have paid to UN Habitat. Mr. President, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's take our seats. Your Excellency Slambas Sokwane, the Vice President of the Republic of Botswana, representing President Masisi. Your Excellency Roman Mayor Falcon, the President of the UN Habitat Assembly. Director General of the United Nations Office at Nairobi, Zainab Hawa Bangura. Executive Director of the UN Habitat, Maimuna Sharif, my sister. Honorable Ministers and Heads of Delegations, Mayors, and Representatives of local and regional governments, Delegates, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning and welcome to Nairobi. On behalf of the people and government of Kenya, and on my own behalf, I'm truly delighted to have the honor to welcoming you to this warm and beautiful land in Kenya and to our capital city of Nairobi, the globally famous green city in the sun. I hope you have already experienced our people's legendary hospitality and that you will find some time to explore and enjoy the attractions which have earned us the name Magical Kenya. Uh, maybe at this point it is important for me to tell you maybe three things that are important for your stay in Nairobi. Number one, this is um, the city, the only one in the world, with a closed canopy forest on one side, the side where we are. This is also the only city in the world that has a national park in the city with wild animals, elephants and uh, rhinos and uh, lions and cheetahs. And uh, just for your information, you may find them in the street sometimes because <laughs> they break off from the fence of the national park. Please be careful because they are wild. They are not domesticated. And lastly, many of you at the end of this Kenya is the home and the cradle of humankind. This is where the earliest remains of man have been traced. So when you find yourself feeling at home and having a problem going back to Europe and America and the rest of Africa, just know that you are at home. So let me, let me welcome you home. In fact, we are considering removing all requirements of travel and visa because it's not fair for anybody to be asked for visa when they are going home. <laughs> Our ambition to be the home of the United Nations Human Settlement Program, UN Habitat, was inspired by a deep commitment to pursue economic development together with sustainable urbanization in harmony with the preservation of our national heritage. The international community's decision to locate this critical organization here is therefore out of recognition and emphatic endorsement of this commitment. Our experience in balancing the imperatives of industrialization, sustainable urbanization, 
and ecological responsibility as fundamental components of socio-economic transformation has had its challenges and setbacks. But we are persuaded now, more than ever, that not only is it worthwhile and feasible, but it, is also, it also enhances the efficiency, safety, beauty, and livability of our cities. Even now, challenges exist with variety and on a scale that is unprecedented. The world is emerging from a devastating pandemic whilst grappling with a relentless economic crisis driven by geopolitical tensions as well as the triple planetary crisis of pollution, loss of biodiversity, and of course, climate change. As a consequence, millions of people throughout the world have been adversely affected, including through threats to life and also threats to livelihoods. In addition to normal migration to urban areas, millions of people displaced by the recent social, economic, and political upheavals joined the poor, vulnerable, underserved, and marginal segments of our urban populations. For better or for worse, the world population has reached 8 billion people, 57% of whom live in urban areas. These numbers are expected to increase steadily in the coming years, but urban populations are projected to rise even faster. In the global south, the rates will be even more pronounced. Whilst in Africa, where the median age is 19, urban populations will be very youthful, presenting a novel set of challenges and opportunities for national economic and urban planning and general development. Urban centers have always held the most intense concentrations of both best and the worst human possibilities. Wealth and poverty, well-being and suffering, dignity and misery, all in one ecosystem. As a result, they are also the theaters of the starkest inequalities in human opportunities and human outcomes. The explosion in global populations as well as urbanization has immense implications for global production and consumption, with humanity poised firmly between trends and practices likely to overwhelm the planet's capacity to support life on one end and clean, green, efficient, and abundant sustainability on the other end. Fundamentally, this gathering is one more opportunity for the global community to confer and reflect about the progress made in imagining new possibilities for the sustainable provision of opportunities and amenities to promote the flourishing of nearly 10 billion human beings whilst enhancing the Earth's capacity to support all life on it. Urbanization is an economy's ultimate test of efficiency, inclusivity, resilience, and sustainability across all goods and services. Huge demands for basic goods is always accompanied by tremendous pressure on energy resources and the environment. The connection between prosperity and ecological sustainability is always strong and direct. How we perform in this test depends on the type and quality of decisions, choices, strategies, and policies that we make and pursue, which in turn reflects the depth of our deliberations and attention to the agenda in forums like this one. Our progress in affirming the fundamental right to decent housing is critical to the achievement of sustainable urbanization in terms of SDG number 11. Recognizing this imperative and realizing that more than half of Kenya's population will live in urban areas by 2050, 
we have integrated universal housing as a critical pillar of the national bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Into the housing program, we have further mainstreamed sustainable urban practices of green building, green spaces, adoption of low carbon energy use, including low carbon transport solutions, as well as urban agriculture and effective waste management. The governor of Nairobi informed me this morning that he made sure that all the delegates were transported on buses that are that do not use fossil fuels. That all the buses that were used to transport delegates here were using green energy. In addition to these measures under our urban resilience program, we are restoring degraded landscapes and ecosystems through a robust program, which includes increasing Kenya's tree cover from 12% currently to 30% by planting 15 billion trees over the next 10 years. Our capacity to com coherently pursue these vital objectives has been significantly bolstered by the government's policy to mainstream sustainable development goals generally, and more pertinently, number 11 on sustainable cities and communities, and number 13 on climate action into national development planning and implementation. A key barrier to our aspiration for sustainable urbanization happens to be the very impediment to efficient, sustainable climate action in the global South and Africa, and that is sufficient and affordable financing. As a result, we are unable to effectively pursue all the opportunities in sustainable urbanization and leverage them to promote the broader agenda of economic transformation, climate action, and sustainable development. Our discussions must therefore pay due attention to the fact that the prevalent unjustness of the international financial architecture and the discriminatory practices inherent in development financing are iniquitous insofar as they directly and indirectly exacerbate the vulnerability of the majority of humanity. It is time, therefore, to correct this systemic injustice to enable us effectively mobilize multilateralism to achieve global net zero emissions, avert a climate catastrophe, and achieve sustainable development goals. Let us apply ourselves to these imperatives and ultimately make a stand and take a stand for humanity by way of embracing an effective, sustainable, inclusive, and just vision for the UN habitat. I acknowledge with profound gratitude the progress UN habitat has made in refining and championing the deployment of effective multilateralism in addressing the challenges of human settlement and promoting sustainable urbanization. For this reason, I believe it is necessary to reiterate here the urgent need and immense importance of strengthening UN habitat and enhancing its capacity to support member states in advancing the agenda of sustainable urbanization and human settlement. Clearly, we have an assignment and your work is well defined. I urge you to exploit this important opportunity to generate a robust framework for addressing the existential crisis of our time. On that note, I would like to announce to you that Kenya is privileged to have the honor of co-hosting the inaugural Africa Climate Summit to be held from the 4th to the 6th of September this year here in Nairobi. The summit will be Africa's opportunity to refine its position in preparation for COP28, which I hope is going to be the last COP for us to host, where we expect to articulate our agenda in a strong, clear, united, and effective voice. I take this opportunity to welcome you back to Nairobi for the summit. 
And I hope we will all have the resolve of making COP28 the last COP that we are going to hold as humanity. I am told that there are preparations for COP29. I think they should be cancelled. <laughs> because it is possible for us to agree on a framework that will bring everybody on board. And as a continent, we will be going to COP28 with a clear mind on what we need to do and how Africa and the Global South can work with the Global North, not as adversaries, but as partners to be able to resolve the climate crisis and present ourselves the opportunity to have a win-win outcome that has no finger pointing. I am a very strong believer that with the right investments, Africa can present the opportunity to decarbonize global manufacturing and industrialization and provide for green growth. This is not an occasion for us to do the usual, north versus south. I think it will be irresponsible of us to continue that conversation. The south is as in danger as is the north on this matter of climate change. None of us is safe. And therefore, we should act in concert, we should act together, and we should seek a win-win outcome. The second session of the UN Habitat Assembly is now officially open, and I thank you. Mr. President, words cannot express our sincere gratitude for the kindness and the profound words you have shared with us, and for finding time to inaugurate this second session of the UN Habitat Assembly. I thank you. Distinguished delegates, we have come to the end of the first part of our inaugural meeting. I would like to request...